Hey, what's up? Leron here and once in a while I'll work on a painting that is so complex and so challenging that I will use the grid method myself. And if you've been following me, let me fix that. Here we go. Uh, if you've been following me for a while, you know that this is Ruth and this is me. So Ruth is our perfect doggo and this is a rather complex uh, painting and it has a lot of elements including both me and her sitting on a bench in the boulevard uh, and when I approach these kinds of paintings I do love to use some kind of an overarching grid that will help me get all the elements in the right place. I know that I can rely on my skills to draw myself fairly accurately and Ruth fairly accurately and the background very accurately but having everything work together can be a big challenge, I know this, I'm aware of that. And if your goal is a painting ultimately, maybe you don't care as much about the drawing skills, which I'm fine with as well. I do think it's important to develop both and I personally want to, but not everyone's into that. So what I wanna show you is how to create the grid, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do that in the computer, on your reference photo and then also on paper. And lastly, we're gonna jump forward in time and I'm gonna show you the final result. So with that, let's take it to the computer. I'm gonna show you how it's done. So let me show you how I get this done in the computer. So I have a, this reference photo here. Now it's not the exact same photo. Uh, it's actually a different one, but from the same moment, okay, I snapped a couple of pictures. And here's the thing. What you wanna do is first, and by the way, I know how to do this in Photoshop. If you're using any other software, it should be possible. So it's, it's probably a similar setting in the menu, but I'm sorry, I don't know how to do it exactly in other softwares. So what you want to do is go to view, show grid. Now what this is going to do is put that grid on. Now the density and all of the settings is something you want to play with. So for example, you go to Photoshop, preferences, grid, guides, grids, and slices. Now look at this. It says every 22.3 centimeters. This is what I've chosen. Now if you change it to three, you'll get this crazy grid with tons of squares. This is too much because let me explain why. If, for example, let's put it back in 22 or even let's put it in uh, 40. So you see now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, now I know that to get my forehead, I need to go to the second from top, second from left, for example, square. So I can count. Or for example, this tree, I know it cuts this line in the second square from the top and the third from the right or fourth from the left. But if you have this grid, I mean, what are you gonna do? It's just way too much. And in theory, you can get it accurately, but who's gonna count like 50 squares here, 30 squares there, it's way too complex. What I like to do is anywhere between six, um, when I look at it from left to right, I like to have between six and 12 maybe squares. So in this instance, I chose 22.3, which gives me a little more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, 11, yeah. Uh, because it's a bit of a larger scene with a little more detail. So I wanted to get it as detailed as possible. So I went with this. Now, one more important thing you want to pay attention to is that you get a round, even, uh, not even, but round number of squares. So had I chosen 22, you see I get this uh, awkward partial square here and I don't want to measure that. That's too complex for me. So what I do is I go 21, uh, uh, 22.1, no, it's not good enough, 20.2, point 0.3 is perfect. You get the edge of the square to align. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Now, once I have this, what I basically do is I, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually take you to the table and show you how I transfer it to paper, but this is it for the uh, step that's in Photoshop. Now, if you don't have this ability to use a grid, you can actually draw. So one thing I could consider drawing, doing is drawing a, a straight line down the middle and then uh, sorry, another line for a quarter and then another line for another quarter and then another line for an eighth. Obviously, my lines are way too thick, but you get the point. And then you just subdivide it to how, how much you want. Then you do the same from top to bottom. Okay, that's another way that can work if you don't have this nifty grid feature. Then you do the same on the paper, okay? So there are plenty of solutions, but the idea is to get a grid and get the drawing done a little more accurately because the grid helps you to know where to place every element, which by the way, I probably should have mentioned in the beginning, but this is what the grid method is about. Now I'm gonna take you to the table and I'm gonna show you how I do this on the paper itself. So here's our nice large painting. Uh, well, drawing, it's still not a painting. And let me talk about the technique of drawing the squares here. It's very simple. All you have to do is measure the full length here Okay, so I got about 23 centimeters. And then what I do is 
by this length, I go to the, what I showed you on Photoshop. So I had 11 squares, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then I just divide this length, 23 by 11. Whatever I get, which is, I believe, 2 point something, I just measure and draw. Now you have to be super accurate about it because often you will get a result that's like 2.1 or I'm working centimeters, by the way, if you work inches, perfect. Um, so, and then you just measure and you draw, measure, draw, measure, draw, measure, draw all the way around here and around there. And you just draw a straight line. I like to measure both top and bottom and then connect the lines. And as long as they're parallel, you've done a good enough of a job usually, okay? Now then what happens is after you have the grid, and again, you measure all around, and, and then you connect the top to bottom and right to left. Once you got that done, uh, you do the drawing based on the grid. So you look at the points where the, the objects of the drawing intersect the grid and you use them as references okay so you look at the ear it cuts through this line of this specific square like that and then it cuts through here you connect the two so it's sort of like connecting the dots you do have to make sure that things still flow because they can get very stale and stiff if you work with the grid because you end up connecting straight lines you don't want to do that you want to notice the curves as well okay and I also recommend starting from the edges because then you it's easier if you go to this for example the bench then you have to start counting one two three four five now where was it you get confused you start from the edges and you notice let's say that my hair cuts through this square and then through that one and then you spread out okay I hope that makes sense this is how you translate it to paper. Now what I want to do is I'm going to move time forward to after this painting is done, which is probably not going to be even today, and then I'm going to show you the end result. So here we go, we jump forward in time and you got the final result here. Very pleased with it. As, as I can see it in the camera, I think the colors don't show properly, but I will try and edit it to make sure they're a little more saturated. I'm going to hold it up close as well so you can see and we'll remove the tape together. Uh, and again, to make something like this, um, I would very often feel like I have to rely on some kind of an overarching grid just to make sure to connect everything. And as you can see, the grid is still a little visible. That's not a big deal. I'm going to go over it with an eraser or I'll just leave it. I actually like uh, to leave pencil lines on my paintings. I don't mind that. Uh, so let's remove the tape and see what we got here. Hopefully it didn't leak too much. Uh, this time I made sure to really tighten it. Uh, around the edges so you can see that uh, actually the color didn't go through. Uh, this is also the second type of tape, not the thinner one. So I don't know, maybe it's a little better. It's just wider. Uh, so let's see what we got here. Last side. And here we go. Not too large of a painting, really. You can compare it to uh, the size of my hand or my arm. Uh, but still, I love the way this turned out, I think, uh, the color harmony. And just to talk a bit about the process, I first did an initial wash covering everything up to make sure something ties it all together. Uh, so that wash had uh, this blue here, some yellow for the background, a bit of blue around there and a bit of red. Uh, and I think it worked out really nicely. Uh, and that's the thing that binds the whole thing together. Otherwise, you wouldn't get this smooth transition between you see the gaps of light here and this section, it would just feel a little off. Um, especially with larger pieces sometimes just to have more peace of mind I like to do that again the grid is still visible but that's really not a big deal some of it faded out with the paint some of it stayed you can use a, a softer lead and then it will wash out uh, with the water right okay, so this is it for this one I hope you enjoyed seeing how I use the grid method just to get everything accurately even though we skipped the actual process um, I like to once in a while film a process just for my uh, not film it rather just paint it for myself so that I can focus better in any case now let's wrap it up face to face so this is it for this one hopefully the uh, likeness is here and it actually looks like me now again once in a while I love to uh, do a painting process that's more in private you know I film so much and I find that it's much easier to concentrate on the actual painting and to maybe think outside the box and try and challenge myself whenever I don't film now if there's one goal for this video it is to encourage you to uh, to not avoid using these types of methods like the grid method can really help 
especially when there are a lot of components and you you may be good and or decent at least at drawing things uh, from observation but when it all comes together it can be a bit of trouble to get things right with larger paintings sometimes you really have to do this because it's just hard to gauge the proportions because it's so large so this is a good method to get that right and you know people use it all the time for uh, doing murals and larger pieces um, they either project or something like that so don't be afraid to use these work on your drawing skills don't be dependent on it but do uh, try and make use of it by the way one quick note I didn't mention when I did a screen capture in my computer uh, I don't know how to export the picture with the grid if you know let me know in a comment down below but what I usually do is put the grid and then do a screen capture just a small note I hope you enjoyed this one don't forget to leave a like if you have and drop a comment down below uh, it really helps me to know better what to do my videos about and also it helps spread the video out and one last note if you want to learn how to paint like this be sure to check out the frustration free watercolor course link is always in the description box below thank you so much and I will talk to you again in the next one real soon